Finally, we are back with new Premiere Pro tricks. Today, I'm going to share six editing tricks that will make your editing much faster. So without further delay, let's get started. Trick number one, project templates. Instead of starting with a blank project every time and wasting minutes creating the same folders and importing the same assets, you can save yourself a lot of effort. In Premiere Pro, simply set up your project once, then go to File at top menu click on the Save as Template. Give it a name, for example, New Project Template. Now, whenever you begin a new project, you can select this template and instantly have all your folders and assets ready to go. It's a simple trick, but a massive time saver. Trick number two, keyboard shortcuts. One of the easiest ways to speed up your editing workflow is by using shortcuts. Let's start with trimming. Normally, we grab the razor tool, make a cut, switch back to the selection tool, and then delete the unwanted part. That process takes too long. A faster method is to move your playhead to the point where you want to cut and you want the left side of the clip then simply press W. This instantly trims from the playhead and deletes next to it. Also, this will move all remaining clips without leaving empty space. If you want to remove the part before the playhead and keep the second part, then press Q. It's a simple trick, but a massive time saver. Another set of handy shortcuts are the J, K, and L keys. L plays your video forward, and if you tap it twice, playback doubles in speed. Keep pressing it to go even faster. J does the same thing, but in reverse. It plays backward or rewinds at higher speeds. K is your stop button. Together, these keys let you navigate the timeline much faster than dragging around with the mouse. You can also customize your own shortcuts. Go to Edit Menu at top, then click on the keyboard shortcuts, and a new panel will open. Many of the top row function keys, F1, F2, F3, etc., are usually free to assign. For example, search for keyframe temporal. Scroll down, and you will find keyframe temporal interpolation ease in and ease out. Click on next to first one in empty space, assign F2, and, and for second one, assign F1. Now, when you're working with keyframes, you just select them and press F1 for ease out or F2 for ease in to apply the easing instantly. You can assign shortcuts for almost any command you use often. I personally use F3 for next. Little tweaks like this can save you a huge amount of time during editing. Trick number three, set duration once for all clips. If you've got multiple clips on your timeline and you want each of them to be the same length, doing it manually is a pain. For example, let's say you want each clip to be exactly 10 frames long. Normally, you'd move forward 10 frames, press W to cut the rest of the first clip, then repeat the same steps again and again for every single clip. That's way too time consuming. Here's a faster method. Just select all your clips, right click, and choose speed slash duration. Enter the frame length you want, let's say 10 frames, and hit OK. Instantly, every clip will be trimmed to the exact same duration. You might notice gaps left between the clips, but there's a quick fix for that too. Go to the Sequence menu at the top and click Close Gaps. All the spaces will disappear automatically, leaving your clips perfectly aligned. This trick saves a huge amount of time and energy, especially when you're working with a large number of clips. Trick number four, save time with Mega Bundle. Tired of creating transitions, captions, or manually color grading your videos? It can be a huge time drain, but you don't have to do it all yourself. That's why I've put together an all-in-one mega bundle, 400 plus seamless transitions across 15 unique categories, 800 plus cinematic elutes, subtitle presets, and much more. To make it even better, it's currently 50% off for limited time. Don't miss out, grab it now, and speed up your editing workflow like a pro. Trick number five, audio adjustment. Once your editing is done, it's time to add background music. But here's the issue. When you drag a music track onto the timeline, it usually overpowers your dialogue. Manually cutting the music and lowering the volume every time someone speaks takes way too long. A smarter way is to let Premiere handle it automatically. Select your music clip, then open the essential sound panel. If you don't see it, go to the window menu and enable it. Mark your track as music and turn on ducking. Then click Generate Keyframes. Premiere will automatically detect where dialogue is present and lower the background music during those parts. When the dialogue ends, the music fades back up. Simple and super efficient. If the music still feels too loud or too soft, you can fine tune it directly in the essential sound panel by adjusting the volume sliders. While we're on audio tricks, here's another useful one. Select all your dialogue clips, go to the essential sound panel again, and enable enhance speech. Then click on the enhance button. Premiere will enhance your voice clarity. You can adjust the mix amount. I usually keep it between five and six, which works great in most cases, and you can tweak the settings until it sounds just right for your project. This combination of ducking and speech enhancement can make your audio sound professional without spending hours manually adjusting levels. 
Trick number six, export setting. Many editors put in hours of effort to create high quality edits but end up ruining the final result by exporting with the wrong settings. To make sure your video looks just as good after export, here's what you need to do. Go to the export panel. First, name your file and choose the location where you want to save it. Next, for format, always choose H.264. This is one of the most reliable formats for both quality and file size. Now, expand the video tab. Under basic video settings, set your resolution. For example, 2560 by 1440 is considered 2K, and if your sequence is 4K, Premiere will automatically select that resolution for you. Leave field order and aspect as they are. Next, check render at maximum depth and also check use maximum render quality. Both of these help preserve your video quality. Under encoding settings, look for performance. If you see the option for hardware encoding, select it because this uses your GPU and gives you the best speed and efficiency. For bitrate settings, choose VBR one pass and set the target bitrate to around 120 megabits per second. This will give you a sharper, higher quality video output. Finally, expand the general tab and enable use previews. If you rendered previews during editing, Premiere will use them during export, saving you time. Once you've set everything up, go to the top next to preset, click the three dots and save these settings as a preset. Give it a name like H.2642K-120 bitrate. Now, the next time you export, you can just select this preset and boom, your settings are applied instantly. This way, you'll always get the best possible quality without wasting time redoing the settings every single time. That's all for today's tutorial. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more informative tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.